you glad Jesus doesn't throw the clay away when we make a mistake or in there? Have to have some water. <laughs> Got a cough I can't get rid of. All right, this is uh, coming to the, the end of another year, isn't it? And uh, so we open our service tonight. We are, you know, we're at the end of a, another year. We're another year older, and the old song goes, and deeper in debt. <laughs> another year older and deeper in debt. So, but uh, as we, uh, as the, the year ends here. We only have what about three more days of this year, and and we'll be starting a new year. And I thought it might be a good time for us as God's people to take a inventory of our walk with the Lord. Uh, we could we could take a very close look at where we have been, where we are, and where the Lord wants us to be. And um, this uh, I was going to be in the third chapter of Colossians tonight, if you'd like to turn there, and verses probably, well, I know I'll be using verses one through three, and um, might use a few more there, but uh, this third chapter of Colossians gives us uh, the opportunity to, and the challenge to, uh, to do just that. Paul had received a letter from the pastor of the church there reporting on the spiritual condition of this church. This is one of the churches that Paul had uh, got started in Coloss. And um, so the spiritual, uh, he declares that heresy had been, had risen up, you know, in the church there. And uh, we know that what heresy is, is a, it's a, an opinion that is contrary to church doctrine. That's that's what this is. And Paul would not allow anything to dilute the gospel of Christ. And uh, so there needed to be some, I guess, some house cleaning going on there. And, uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes in our, in our own houses, we have to do some house cleaning, didn't we? Spring house cleaning or fall house cleaning or whatever. And... Um, so before I begin tonight, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight again. Father, we love you tonight and thankful tonight for the opportunity to speak your word. Thankful, Lord, for your words that you have left us. And uh, we pray, Lord, as we read and study your words that we will apply these things to our heart that we might be better witnesses, better Christians for you. I ask now tonight that you'd be with me. Help me, Father, to speak your words that you'd have me to speak. And uh, just, just bless, I pray, you the word. And we thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, as we may be doing some own house cleaning, you know, in our own house, we find some things that are no longer needed. Uh, I find a lot of those. I got a whole garage full of them that I don't need. <laughs> need to get rid of them. <laughs> but, uh, but, of course, there are a few things that just need to be, you know, relocated. And uh, in the process of the cleanup, you, you, you know, we uncover a few things that might be important to us. Maybe something we hadn't seen for a while. And uh, so you don't throw those items away. You keep them so that they might be of use later. Mm -hmm. And as I read these verses, I find that they challenge God's children to do exactly, you know, the same thing. As we look at our lives in the light of of these verses here. I'll read these in just a minute. We are challenged to retain some things, to release some things, and remember the rest. And I want to look at these verses tonight and uh, share with you the challenges that they, you know, that they contain. And um, got too many notes here. But uh, I want, want to kind of show that God has a plan for our life. Whenever he saved us, he didn't save us just to, you know, to sit around and do nothing. He saved us for, you know, for a purpose, yeah. to do something. And he wants certain things from our life, and he has a right to demand those things. 
things, uh, you know, things from our life. Uh, might we notice the challenges contained in these verses here as I speak on the thought, an old challenge for a new year. And uh, let me read these uh, verses here. Chapter 3 of Colossians, verses 1 through, let me go down to verse 3 here. If ye, the, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, for Christ setteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. And uh, <clears throat> Paul tells us here that uh, that uh, we are risen with Christ. This word if that's in here, it doesn't suggest doubt, but rather means since. He says since, you know, if we look at it, since we are risen with Christ. And uh, Paul is saying here, whatever, whatever Christ did, we are regarded by God as, you know, as having done also. And uh, with Christ here means equal. We, we are equal with Christ because he, you know, he came and he died on the cross and uh, he died for us. And, uh, and Christ, for the, the relationship is intimate. It, in other words, we have a personal relationship with Christ and it's complete. And uh, the believer mystically uh, risen with Christ, even as he has mystically died with him when he was buried, you know, when, when we are buried in the figure of baptism. We are, you know, we are mystically, we were died, we were buried with him, wasn't we? and we rose again. We, ro we rose up out of the water, a new creature in Christ, didn't we? The old man was put to death, wasn't he? And uh, that's basically what this, uh, you know, means here is, uh, you know, in our spiritual lives, the same thing is true. <clears throat> Some things have to be let go. And uh, there are some things that try to attach themselves to our lives, you know, that are just plain trash. And that, that can happen pretty easy in, in the world today. And uh, like I was talking about a while ago in cleaning our house, sometimes we find stuff that we don't need it. It's trash, isn't it? We get rid of it. <laughs> and uh, if, if you might have some, you can ship to Goodwill or somewhere. But... Uh, but anyway, if it's trash, we need to kick those things to the curb, and other things simply don't have a place in our lives, and those things, you know, they need to go, don't they? And the same way in our spiritual life. We, we might have some things in our life that, uh, we, you know, they don't belong there. We don't need them, and we need to get rid of them. Uh, why do we need to get rid of those things? They hinder our walk with Christ, don't they? And uh, if we allowed the mind to focus on the world, uh, we would have no time to give our, you know, to give it, no time to give itself to the things of God. And uh, so Paul mentions some dangerous distractions that would hinder our walk if, you know, if they were allowed. And uh, so we want to look at some things here tonight that he says we should avoid. And... Uh, so we need to, uh, in verse 2 there, he talked about uh, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. And uh, since we have been uh, raised to a new life in Jesus, we are told to, you know, to set our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. So if we look at the things in the, in the world all the time, uh, you know, it don't take long till we're kind of sliding along with the world, aren't we? Not not with Christ. The world, uh, the the word affection refers to the mind here, and we are told here to focus our thoughts on heavenly things, not earthly things. And uh, we are to set our minds on things of God, on things that bring glory to Him. And, um, and first, so let's look at these uh, things that Paul mentions here. And uh, 
these are not my words. These are Paul's. And if we look at the Bible as, you know, as God's, you know, God interpreted these things to the to these men that wrote them. Well, that's what God is saying here, isn't it? And uh, so let's look at some of the things Paul says we should not focus on. And um, Paul says to mortify your members. This this speaks of a slaying. In other words, put to death what is earthly in us. And mortification is a turning of the will away from self to God. And uh, so that's, you know, that's what we need to do in our life. If we've got a new year coming up, this is a good time to, you know, to just see where we're at. See where we're at with God. The first thing that he mentions here in verse, uh, let's see, verse 5, let me read it. Mortify there your, therefore your members which are upon the earth. First thing he mentions here is fornication. And uh, fornication, this word is translated from a Greek word that refers to any type of sexual expressions. Expression, sorry. Paul is telling us that any sexual activity that takes place outside the uh, you know, confines of a marriage relationship is a sin and must be put away from our lives. And, um, and then he mentions uncleanness. This word means uh, impurity. It looks beyond the act of the body and to the very thoughts of the mind and the motives of the heart. Not only is the outward man supposed to, to be clean, but so are the heart and the mind. It's you know, could be clean. Um, inordinate affection, I guess I pronounced that right, this speaks of wicked passions, and um, it has the idea of, of lust for forbidden things. God has marked uh, certain things as being off limits, and uh, this kind of lust seeks out those things and longs for them. And uh, so we have to, you know, we have to, that, that's a no-no. We're supposed to, you know, not do those things. And um, the next one here is evil concupiscence, is that, concupiscence, something like it. <laughs> I always had trouble with that word. Uh, this means evil desires is what this word means. It speaks of a mind that longs for forbidden things. And uh, so uh, we have to be careful that our, you know, uh, our mind doesn't wander to the, you know, these things and think about them. And uh, the next thing Paul mentions is covenants here. This means to have more. It refers to desire to persist to possess more than one has been given by God. You know, uh, God said he would take care of us, didn't he, in the Bible, you know? And uh, he said he'd give us what we need. He said we didn't need a whole lot, didn't he? Raiment and, and food, and, and he said he would take care of us. And uh, so if we, it's a refusal to accept what we have as a gift of God. It is the placing of things ahead of God, of his will for our life, that is why it's, it's called idolatry. idolatry. And uh, so let's, let's look at these verses here in six, uh, verse 6, 7, and 8. For eight. Uh, which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of, of disobedience? In the which you also walk sometimes when you lived in them. But, you know, uh, I wasn't a an angel before I got saved. You know, I was probably done a lot of these things, you know. And, but that's what God saved me from, and I'm thankful for that tonight. And, um, and he says... Uh, but now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, uh, filthy communications out of your mouth. So he, he named these, lie not one to another, 
seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Whenever uh, we accepted Christ and we were baptized, we buried the old man, didn't we? And the new man arose. So we're we're the new we're the new creature in Christ. So we need to put away all of these things, and uh, and not uh, not even you know think about them. But let's look at these uh, ones that he mentioned here. First one was anger. This word refers to a, a deep smoldering uh, uh, bitterness and an anger that dwells in the heart. And makes the angry person hard to deal with. You ever see anyone like that? that you know, somebody's angry and you, you can't, you can't deal with them. You know, you can't do nothing with them. And the angry person will tend to lash out in both words and deeds. And I've run into a few of those in my lifetime. And uh, then he mentions wrath. This word refers to anger that boils over. It speaks of sudden, explosive outburst of anger and um, probably been there a few times in my lifetime before I got saved I hope <laughs> hope not after <laughs> but um, but you know as you look back over your life and you you see these you read these and you think about it yeah I've been there too you know so but he Paul mentioned up here he says in verse 7, in the which ye also walk sometimes when ye lived in them, you know. And so, yeah, he, he, he knew. He was writing this letter to this church because they were, uh, they had, I guess, apparently had someone that was trying to, uh, uh, you know, to teach them things that was contrary, you know, to the, you know, the scripture here. And, um, so that's what that, you know, what that word meant. And uh, so he was telling them, you know, we need to, you need to seek those things which are above and not, not of the world. So apparently they had someone there that was trying to, uh, you know, to get them away from, away from the things of God and teaching them false doctrine. And uh, the next one was uh, malice. This is anger mixed with a desire to do harm to the focus of the anger. When malice is involved, the angry person strikes out to do damage to another person. So uh, I've seen a few of those sometimes in my lifetime where somebody would, I mean, they get so angry, they just, you know, beat somebody up or, you know, something. And um, blasphemy. Blasphemy, blasphemy, I can't say that word. <laughs> this word literally means to slander. It can refer to slanders directed at God or another person. And we slander others when we insult and belittle others. You know, sometimes this happens a lot of times in gossip. You know, people gossip, they talk, and then they get to put somebody down behind their backs, you know. And, uh, you know, that's not, you know, that's that's not right to do that, you know. Uh, we're supposed to to love everyone, you know, to love as we, what does the scripture say? To love others as we love ourselves. And uh, so uh, that's, you know, we can't, can't do those things. Filthy communication. This refers to abusive speech. It speaks of words that are thrown around in an attempt to hurt or wound someone. And this usually happens when people say things they should not say in a moment of anger. And, uh, you know, that's, that can happen, you know, a lot of times. And uh, so we have to be careful of those things and make sure we don't, uh, you know, say something that will hurt someone hurt someone else in a moment of anger. Um, if these things are in our life, then they need to be, you know, put out. We need to get rid of them, don't we? They will, they will hinder our walk with Christ. And um, 
uh, not only will they hinder our walk with Christ, they cripple, you know, they will cripple our spiritual, you know, our spirituality. You know, uh, we we just, you know, won't have it. You know, how can we be victorious over the sin in our lives? One step we can take is to starve the fleshly appetites. We have to, you know, we have to starve them. We, we do that. Uh, do not feed the anger. Uh, do not feed the lust. Second, we can overcome by crowding it out. And uh, how can we do that? We can fill our lives with positive things that, you know, that evil has no room to flourish. So uh, we have to fill our life with things of, you know, of God and uh, uh Sometimes if we ain't got nothing else to do, we can we, we can either read or we can listen to some good gospel tapes or something that fills our fills our mind with good things, doesn't it? Not, not bad things. It's so easy in the world today. I mean, you all you got to do is walk down the street and somebody's doing something that you don't really want to hear, do you? So. Um, when we fill our, ourselves with the things of God, in Philippians 4.8, let me see if I marked the scripture I thought I did here. Let's see if I can see. I went the wrong way here. I thought I marked it. I did. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. So those, if we think on those things, you know, the the world won't have a, a chance to, you know, to get into our, our mind. That's what it is. Works on our mind, doesn't it? Um, Colossians uh, 3.16 also says um, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord so I, lo I love to come together here and sing gospel songs you know and and uh, I, I like that. And uh, so uh, I'm going to get on kind of early tonight. I'm afraid of that. <laughs> um, you know, that's a lot to take in, isn't it? These things that Paul has, uh, has uh, written here. Of course, he was writing to the church at Colossians, but I think they're good for any church, you know, or any, anybody, any Christian. To read these things and uh, and and see where we're at in our life, and uh, so we need to take a good hard look at our lives and our in our walk with the Lord. And are there some something in our lives that need to be retained, or does our focus need to be adjusted? Are there something in our life that needs to be released? Um, do we need to lay down some of these things mentioned in this message, in these verses here tonight? Um, there may be some things that need to be remembered. Maybe we need to take a trip down memory lane and uh, nail a few things down. Maybe, you know, maybe even tonight, you know. Uh, thankful for that song, Brother Charlie, that uh, he didn't throw the clay away. I always liked that song. And uh, thankful that sometimes whenever we, you know, we maybe we get away from God, not as close as we were, that <clears throat> he doesn't forget about us, does he? He, he, uh, so he don't throw the clay away. He, he just takes it and remolds it and that's what he does for us. He molds our life, you know, and makes us into something that's good. And um, 
Um, that's about all I had tonight on those on those verses. I've uh, been looking at these for quite a while, and um, I said, well, I think I'll use those tonight. And um, maybe there, if you know, if there's any needs here in the church tonight, and the Lord has, you know, spoken to our hearts, and and the altars are open. You know, if if uh, someone here, and I don't, as I look around, I don't think there's anyone here that you know that's lost. You know, most people here have been saved, and um, or you know, to my knowledge, and um, but uh, maybe maybe we just need to look, stop and look at our life and see if there's something, you know, more that we could do for the Lord or. Maybe that, uh, you know, something we can do for him, you know, do for him that we're not doing, maybe. And uh, we can always pray for a pastor, you know, for our, for our church. We sure need that. And um, so um, so if the Lord has spoken to your heart, if uh, Brother uh, Charlie, if you want to come and and give us a song of invitation. And uh, maybe someone, you know, might have uh, something they'd like to pray about tonight. Um, you know, you're, you're welcome to come. we got this new year coming up, and um, uh, it's a good time to, you know, to stop and think about these things. What can, what can, maybe I can do, you know, tonight to... Uh, Draw closer to the Lord. Maybe do more for Him. And um, maybe do more for our church. Might be something in our church that uh, God has spoken to you about, you know, doing. Or um, somebody might be here, somebody might be here that God is calling to, you know, do something else for Him, you know. So uh, as we uh, stand tonight, as far as comes and leads us, if uh, there's a need tonight, well, feel free to come.